Hey, people, what's going on? Thanks for joining me again. You know, about two years ago, I started buying quite a few knives. I've always been into knives, always carried knives, used knives. But, you know, I had, I think I had about four. And then, you know, one day I got interested in knives again. I was, I got into moto camping. That's what it was. If any, if you follow the channel, you know, I ride a dual sport motorcycle. So I got into outdoor activities, moto camping, and, and I've always been into camping, but the moto camping is where I started to really carry a lot of gear, a lot of specialized gear. And so I got into knives. And long story short, in the last two years, I have purchased quite a few beautiful knives. I've only purchased a knife when I felt like I was interested in it. When I reignited my interest in knives, I started off liking stainless steel knives, just being interested in stainless steel knives. Because I do motor camping. I do camping. I'm outdoors a lot. I ride on my motorcycle a lot in the rain. I'm one of those guys that will ride, year, you know, year long. So then I started, you know, researching stainless steel knives. And then I said, well, I really love carrying a knife. I remember carrying a knife and I, I want to carry it again. I wanted to be an, e, I want an EDC knife. So then I started going with small knives. And then, you know, my taste changed, right? I went from the, you know, lower end production knives to uh, mid-tech knives to custom knives. And I think all of us, if you're in the knife industry long enough, you'll go through phases, right? You'll like small knives, big knives, custom knives, cheap knives. The sky's the limit. That's the great thing about this hobby too. The sky's the limit. This video is about this knife right here. So one day, uh, I think it was like two years ago, right? Or a year and a half ago, this knife got announced. And I remember seeing it and going, oh my God, $420. Uh, I, I love the design, but I'm not spending $420. You know, because at that time, I don't know where I was in my journey. So, you know, a couple of years pass and, you know, like I said, I've purchased a lot of knives. I've reviewed quite a few knives and my tastes have changed. And, you know, now I'm at a point where I'm reevaluating, you know, what I'm doing. I have so many. I don't sell them. Uh, I use I use every knife that I carry and I'll, I will carry every knife that I buy. But it gets to the point where, you know, I have way too many knives. Can't carry everything. So but I'm still interested. You know, I'm still interested in knives. I got to the point where I am not purchasing a knife, another knife going forward, unless it is something that I'm interested in. And this actually started a little while ago. Yeah, so let me il illustrate what I mean. So my first knife I purchased when I retired was this knife right here. It's my first and only button lock. It's a Les George VECP. This is one of my favorite knives of all time. I love this maker. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on because I want to short. This video would go on forever if I ramble. But, so I bought this button lock. All right. What else did I buy? This I purchased recently. Um, it's got a kick stop. So that's unique. That's different. I'm just not looking for, you know, another frame lock. 20 CV frame lock. So I bought those two. Uh, then I also bought the stitch. I mean, it's got the ram lock, which is, a you know, similar to the access lock. I'm not going to call that different. But what it is different is this blade shape. And... Just the whole knife. I love this knife. This is, a, you know, one of the knives I purchased after I retired. And this TRM Adam. And I got this because of its craftsmanship. And I love that textured titanium. And it's a slicey, thin knife. I, you know, I was just... I love the looks of that knife. And I purchased it, right? There's really not a whole lot unique about it. Other than it just cool looking but so that's a little bit different than these these are unique in my for my collection this is just cool looking and then i purchased this so just recently this is the kumu s tau and it's my first front flipper and it's in vanic steel which is you know not very common and it's got this i'm calling this a worn cliff blade they call it a sheep's foot but anyway it's got this blade shape that i love so i purchased that so these are literally all the knives I purchased in the last six six months or seven months. All right, I got those off the table. So getting back to this. So, you know, I'm still interested in knives. I, I think I have an, a knife addiction like most of us do. And, you know, I wanted a new knife, but I just don't need one, you know, two a week or four a week. Uh, so I started thinking one day this occurred to me. I remembered Spydeco had this knife, the stovepipe. And like I said, it was $420 brand new and at the time. 
I don't know where I, where I was in my knife journey, but I said, there's no way I'm spending $420. But you know, recently, I, um, I remembered this and I said, man, okay, this knife could go either way. It could be something that's very expensive and you can't find, or it's something that's been discounted because you know, it's at that stage right after, you know, a couple of years after it got released before it becomes a classic. Um, it's an expensive small knife with an odd shape for a lot of people. And I think, you know, this chance it might be still out there. So sure enough, I went on eBay and I found this knife for $340. I put a bid on it and I won. And so basically I wanted this knife because look at it. You know, I am a function over form guy. And I, if you watch any of my videos, I say that over and over and over again. But now I'm at a point in my collecting stage that I've got all those functional knives. And then this is just cool. But I want to back up. I This is functional. This knife is real functional. Let me just show you. Uh, here we go. Here's piece of paper. Uh, let me zoom out. There we go. Yeah, so check this out. This is a, a cleaver blade shape. Uh, it's got a hollow grind, grind if you can see how... Uh, I don't know if that's showing up real good. You can see how it gets thin really quick. These are amazing blade shapes if you've ever... And look at that. Oh, if you guys have not... If there's anybody out there watching my channel has never tried a Warncliffe, just go out and try it. If you're an EDC guy, especially if you're an EDC guy, which means you're opening boxes, packages, zip ties, you know, that kind of stupid stuff, this knife is just perfect. You know, and this utility cut, check this out. Look at that. This knife is amazing. So basically, so the point was, I'm a function over form guy and this certainly does function but it was the form that made me interested in this thing i mean look at this knife so i'm gonna start off right there with this this is not a review this is a first impression and it's really more about my knife collecting journey a lot of times when i do these vid uh, videos i ramble on about what i want and then i edit it all out but i think this one i'm just going to talk about me for a second and if you guys are interested in it then thanks for joining this knife here is a, um, a production version of the custom Bill the Butcher knife. And it's made by this guy, David Ride, Ride, Ride Dumb. I got, by David, uh, whatever his name is right there. I don't know how to say, I don't know how to pronounce that. So go ahead and make fun of me or whatever, but that's what it is. And it's just a unique design. It is a slab of titanium. Look at this thing. It's just a big old slab of titanium. And it's got weird lines when you um when you look at it. There's there these lines here are not here for a reason. I mean, this looks like a very jagged knife, but it really it's not as jagged as it looks. These corners are I think the sharpest corners are right here in the butt, and that's you know, when you hold it sometimes you wedge it into your, your palm of your hand. So that could be, you know, I wouldn't want to be cutting all day long with this, but for an EDC knife, this is perfect. When I, when I saw this for the very first time, I fell in love with it because of this design here, this like wedge on top of the blade. If anybody here ever used a Spydeco Yojimbo 2, this is how you're supposed to hold that knife, uh, you know, and this is how you hold this knife too. You get so much control over the blade in this position right here. Um, it's great. In a you know in the self defense because it's small and it's completely controlled and it's it's just part of your hand. So I remember this knife and I went out and I said, okay, let's see if I can find it. And sure enough, I can find it. Uh, I think one day it will become a classic, but who knows, right? But I didn't buy it for that reason. I bought it because it's aesthetically, I love this knife. And I'm not a big I'm not a small knife guy too. So I. You know, I'm, I wasn't sure if I was going to hate this knife or not. And, you know, typically I don't carry small knives. But this could be a, a definitely a great backup knife. And, you know, I might just carry it because look how cool it is. Right? I don't need another 20 CV frame lock. This is just different. It has a most amazing action. It's on um, phosphor bronze washers. 
flick it out, no problem. It has a very late detent. Like right here is where the detent ball hits the frame lock. I'm not crazy about that. We'll call that a double clutch. But I typically what I'll do is I'll just guide it with my finger until past that point and then and then let it drop. This is an acquired taste. If you're into um a drop shot knife with no kind of manipulation, you're not gonna like this knife. This is more of a Chris Reeve kind of feel to it. Let's go over some of the specs on this so you understand what you're looking at. First of all, this knife is made in Taichung, the factory in Taiwan. This is uh, Spydeco's best factory. They make some of their best knives, the Taichung factory. It's made out of 20, C, uh, 20 CV steel. So that's known for its edge retention and high corrosion resistance. Look at this. Do you see? Let me just, before I go through that, just look how different this knife is. And I'm, I got the camera in the way. So, but look at this milling here. There's a line and then a line. It is just, look at the jimping on the back. It's kind of like a hump. It's kind of a, reminds me of a rhino, right? It's a really thick stock. You got to love a spidey hole. I don't know about y'all, but man, I just love a spidey hole. It's just buttery smooth. And then when you when you close it, it almost kind of like has a little cushion sound to it. And let's see the detent. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It doesn't really... It's not super strong, but it's good. It's nice. It's a cleaver. You can just feel it. It feels heavy. The, the blade feels heavy. It's got a really odd shape to it, and that's why I'm interested in it. This blade here, I uh, love this. You know, before I get into that, let's just go into the specs, all right? So, you know, like I was saying, this is uh, 20 CV steel, and the overall length of this is 6.75 inches or 171 millimeters. Close length is 4 inches. Blade length is 2.78 inches or 71 millimeters. And then the edge is 2.65 inches or 67 millimeters. According to Spydeco's website, this weighs at 4.9 ounces, which is heavy for a, you know, under 7-inch knife. You know, an under 3-inch blade. But I like it. I mean, this is a great weight. There is no milling in there. We'll go over that. Blade thickness is 0 0.157 inches or 4 millimeters. And like I said, the street price right now is $448. And it's got a deep hollow grind. They call it a deep hollow grind, but I, I wouldn't say it's a deep hollow grind. This knife gets pretty thick pretty fast. But it is slicing. Here, let's go ahead and... Uh, well, I got you all here. The thing about it, I love about a worn clip is this tip. I mean, check that out. You try, try to do that with a, a drop point. This is why I love a worn clip. This is why I wanted this knife. Plus... You know, it's a slicer, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's thick. If you get like, um, if you get a thick cardboard, this thing's gonna be act like a wedge, right? But like a normal box, this thing goes right through boxes, no problem. It's a great EDC knife. I mean, for you know, regular EDC stuff. If you're like a, a regular guy like me, and you're not in a work environment where you're using this constantly, and you just need a knife occasionally, this is perfect. And this choked up position here is amazing. This kind of reminds me of a, I brought it out here to show you. Spydeco Yojimbo 2. That choked up position. Uh, there's a name for that. I, I can't recall what the name is. But wow, that's, that is a great, great, great position. And this is a, this is a nice size knife. I mean, as pointy as this thing looks, and it, it looks really pointy and jaggy, jagged it, it certainly i wouldn't i wouldn't say there's any smooth edges on this anywhere but i wouldn't call it pointy either i don't really feel i don't really feel myself being jabbed too much right look i'm not trying to i am not trying to convince anyone of the practicality of this knife i'm saying i start off this video and i'm saying this whole video that I'm getting this because it's different. But wow, is it different. I love the access to the uh, frame lock here. Works really well. Nice big fat opening. 
for my big fat fingers. These scales are contoured. It's really nice. I mean, it's kind of weird that it's got different size fasteners. Like this here is a T10, and then these are T8s, and then that's a T6. Kind of weird. But when it's pinched, this pocket clip actually works really well because it's so thin here that it's got a lot of spring to it. I mean, I hope you won't snap that in half, right? I mean, but man, that works good. But this is a wide knife. It's just a weird knife, man. It's just wide, but I like it. It's almost like a pancake or a uh, seashell or a flat egg. Um, I'm, I'm all about how things feel, not just knives. I'm just a tactile type person. I like how things feel. And this is a very interesting shape. I mean, if you look at the lines, it's got lines going up here and then this way, this, this way, and then this way. It's symmetrical in a sense. I mean, that almost forms like a perfect, well, I don't even know what that forms, but it's angular, this corner, this corner, and this corner, and with these lot, I just like it. And then it's got a, a, a ledge here, and a ledge follows around here, and it cuts up. I, I, I've watched a couple of reviews, and people don't like how this is a backspacers recessed. I, I don't care. I love it. It's not, I mean, obviously, there's nothing about this knife that's designed for use other than i mean this blade does work pretty well now if you're going to hard use this knife and chip it you're going to you're going to have a hard time with this one because as soon as you go back just a little bit on this this edge it gets really super thick let's see there you go. i don't know there you go if you can see that man it gets super thick right around here so if you put a you know, chip in here, you're going to be in trouble. But if you're going to just cut paper and boxes and strop this thing, this thing's going to last forever. The plunge grind is just at the very tip here. Tip of the plunge grind. Excuse me. The sharpening choil comes, it's just at the end of that plunge, plunge grind. You might get like one sharpening or maybe two sharpenings without a smile, but it's just really close to it. And I love this blade shape. This this is an ergonomic dream. This grip right here. Man, I love this grip. Yeah, it's funky. One of the bad things about this knife is it's $448. That is a lot of money. You know, that is like rarefied air. You know what that'll get you? $450? bucks. that will get you this. Bless George. Man, this knife is way, way, way better than it. I mean, this is a great knife, right? But I don't know. Listen, I'm biased. You can also get, you know, Chris Reeves or a Hinderer for just about this price. I mean, Hinderer is cheaper, right? It's $25 cheaper or thereabouts, $20-something. Anyway, so that's the disadvantage of this knife. All right, let's keep on looking at this knife here. So this does not have a steel lock bar insert. So it's uh, pro hopefully carbonized. Um, this is where it hits the detent ball. So it's got like a double clutch. I really like that sound. This pivot acts as an over travel stop. So it does have an over travel stop. Like I said, it doesn't have a steel lock bar insert. Uh, this milled to titanium clip works really well. You really can't put anything else in your knife with this knife in your pocket. It's just so wide. It takes up quite a bit of a, the opening of your pants. It's got a um, stonewash finish to it. The whole knife and the, and the blade, it's all the same color. I really like that. There's really no sharp edges on this, this knife, surprisingly. You know, you look at it and you would think that there's a, a ton of sharp edges. And even with this finger groove here, you'd think that that would be, you know, sharp there. But it's really not. And like this hand grip right here is just perfect. That's why I bought this knife. I knew that this, I saw a review and I saw somebody's hand land right here. And I was like, yeah, not only is this knife 
beautiful in my mind. It's just different. It's got this er amazing ergonomics. When you get your finger on top of that blade and you can just really get down into something. Talk about like, you know, dig out something. This will do a great job because you are just right there at that tip. Man, this is amazing. This is not a review. This is a impression of this knife or explaining why I bought it, right? And give you a little bit of details behind it. I, I really think I was crazy when I first thought of this and I was like, no, you know what? There's just nothing else that I'm interested in. And this just is, just looks cool. So yeah, if you look at the lockup, it's sitting at about 50%. And the uh, titanium scales are not hollowed out. So there's a bunch of weight to this. I, I like it. I, you know, I think most people are not going to like how much this weighs. But I don't really feel that that weighs any. I, when people say four point something ounces is too much, I I try not to look at them strange. But I, I think they're strange. <laughs> And the pocket clip is tip up, right side only. You know, Spydeco doesn't often design different pocket clips. So this is something unusual for them. Man, it, it fits on this scale. I mean, I, it's really good. It's, a, it's such an industrial look, but I, I really like it. This is completely a personal opinion. This is a personal taste, right? You can look at me and... I remember I was talking to Lefty EDC. He doesn't even know who I am, but I was on his channel. I was watching his review and he hated this knife. And I was like, hey man, have you changed your mind? You know, because he reviewed it when it first came out. And he's like, no. I was like, call me crazy. I'm interested. And he's like, you're crazy. But look at, I love how this thing, the blade hits the, uh, the scale here. And it's just a perfect line there. It's an artistic design. And it's also, it functions well. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting here is this the gap here is pretty big on the frame lock I mean, that's just a wide gap it would have been nice if they had put the relief thing on the inside but again i mean there's just so many lines going on here that yeah i guess it's part of it right you got a line here and a line here i don't know if i mentioned this but i love a spidey hole that's one thing i, I love about spiderco knives you give me a good spiderco knife with a spidey hole in it yeah that's just a bomb. This is just a reliable opening. You could be, you could have gloves on, you could be cold, your hands could be wet. It, it doesn't matter. You can always find this hole. It works so well. The slow roll, the, the thumb flick, the reverse flick, the everything. That spidey hole, man, I just love it. And the gap there is pretty good. Now for a lefty, it, it looks like they've hot, hidden it a little bit, but... I'm not a lefty. I don't really care. I love this pivot. It's got a, a design of a, you know, of a common pivot, pivot out there, an aftermarket pivot, but um, it doesn't look like an exact copy. Um, and then it looks like it has a collar around it. It's really nice. And I really like the maker's mark. Look at that. It's almost like a antler. Guess what that is, right? Very little billboarding on here. And even the, you know, you can barely see these, you know, the Taichung in Taiwan. Barely see that. It's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. And even this uh, Spydeco emblem here, it just kind of fades in there. So this is just an interesting knife. I keep on telling myself I'm not going to buy that many more knives. I don't need any more knives. I'm not a knife channel. I'm a guy that loves knives. Good news is I have so many knives that I've purchased that I haven't reviewed yet. So uh, stick around for that. I, I probably have 50 or 60 excellent knives that that I haven't reviewed yet. So and I, I know I'll buy new I'll buy new knives. OK, well, I will carry this thing and cut with it some more and just just, you know, I don't know, play with it. See if it hurts my hand um, and I'll give it a full review later. But I appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, checking out the channel, supporting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a like on the video or leave a comment down below and check out my playlist. I got a lot of content out there. Let me know what you think of this knife.